Okay, this is the reading for Aquarius for March of 2021. This is a spiritual reading, by the way. <clears throat> okay, I'm just going to get into it. I got the dreams of Gaia, Tarot, Wisdom, and the House of Night, uh, Tarot of the Divine, a whole bunch of cards here, and Chakra Wisdom. So the first card I have is from the Dreams of Gaia deck, okay? The Ace of Earth. Hmm, give me a moment here. <clears throat> right, the Ace of Earth, the Ace of Coins. Um, this brings us to the realm of opportunities, job opportunities, opportunities for making money, opportunities to gain wisdom and go forward. Okay, I'll leave it at that for now. Next card we have is number three, the youth. Now this could symbolizing uh, could be symbolizing a youth in your midst, one that is highly guided, no less. This youth here. Um, their staff is really cradling the stars, meaning that we have a high influence here and either needing to come over them or they are embracing themselves. So meaning the youth could be an old soul um, that you're dealing with here that is guided in some kind of way. You may be dealing with this at this time over this month. Next card. Heaven and earth making rounds. <laughs> Got a lot of green here. So again, heaven and earth is really um, the mix between what we have in our mind, in our imagination, and what is actually here for us on the grounded plane, you know, universal energies um, of what we want to attain and in reality of what we actually have in front of us. Give me a minute here. This is very, uh, it's not linear, this energy. Yeah, there may be a job opportunity here where we either meet a youth that is an old soul or um, having to deal with a youth in this way. I think I'm going to refer back to that heaven and earth when I get more cards on the, on the table here. Because I flip them over one by one. So as I say them, I'm flipping them. Just to uh, make sure that I don't um, let any of the cards influence me until I get to the end of the reading. Now on top of the ace of earth, the dragon there with... New seeds, new growth, and usually this pertains to either money making or our area of work, this kind of thing, or knowledge and skill. That's opening up. What do we have to go on top of that is uh, denial. We have 14 <clears throat> card of denial. We may be, hold on here. Because in this card, we have a hand reaching up for the grapes. And, and the sense is, is it's not quite ripe yet. Things are not quite ripe. So does that pertain to this work or job or knowledge or skill area? Or are we just denying this area altogether? Because things aren't ready. We'll move on here. On top of the youth card, what do we have to explain that? We have 31, risk. <clears throat> risk is kind of like the fool card. Taking a leap forward without knowing really where we're going to land, if we're going to land, that kind of thing. Uh, so it's highly going into uncharted territories here. We may be making, I feel uh, for some, this may be a child in our midst, uh, a youth in our midst. We may be taking a risk having to do with uh, a child in our care. <laughs> yeah. Going into uncharted territory is really what I get. Okay. Now on top of this heaven and earth, what do we get there? 
the fledgling. Yeah, there's a new way that we need to go for, or we are looking to go forward here. The fledgling is about new energy. Where are our passions going to take us? It's the first card in the deck. So it is putting your first foot forward and moving into a direction that you feel passionate about. <sighs> Again, this heaven and earth is making its rounds through the, the spreads here. And usually it comes out when there's a discrepancy between what we want in our head and what we have on the earth plane, right? Um, and I feel like the fledgling energy is really speaking to what we have on the physical plane. So when we're talking about gaining passion to go forward, I feel like we're just going to learn to discover or we're just going to start to discover how to do that. How to, how to go toward our passion, okay? Somehow it's influenced here by a child or a youth that is um, that we have taken a risk with on some, uh, some in some way. And overall, I feel like it's about gaining skills to move forward. Whether it's, you know, our passions could very well be in our work. You know, we have a great passion for what we do and we want to go forward to explore that. We have something in our mind and we're going to um, start to take leaps or start to take steps, period, in the way of passion. This denial card is kind of confusing me here. So we'll continue <clears throat> as we go into the Divine Tarot. Ten of Swords. Man, these are, I swear, I... Maybe it's the way I shuffle. I don't know. <laughs> but a lot of these uh, cards are just continually to come out. And it, it does, um, I do find that there are themes, you know, when you go through. A lot of times there are themes. There's things that come out and it's all across. Okay, so the Ten of Swords, that's about, you know, backstabbing behavior. Someone cutting you down. Not wanting you to go forward. Now on top of the denial... Because denial is <clears throat> usually can be centered about uh, centered in an energy that revolves around you. I feel like denial is very individual. It's not like oh he was in denial of me. It, it could happen, but more often than not, it's it's a self denial. Like the self is doing this. We're denying something, denying letting it in, or denying letting it out, or denying dealing with it, or denying seeing it. This kind of thing. I still don't know. I am very confused about this energy. Give me a moment. Because we have new opportunities that want to open up. That's the first energy. Ace of coins of earth here. The dragon. He wants to sprout new ideas, new skills, new ways to go forward in work. <laughs> goes on top of that is denial so are we we're denying opening like is there uh, pathways opening to us that we are shutting down because we don't feel it's right or we don't feel it's ready or somebody else shutting that down because we don't feel it's right we don't feel they're ready and then the ten of swords backstabbing could someone else be cutting us out of these things because they don't feel that, you know, these are options. But it's very, um, the energy is very still here. I feel like it's going to unfold here in the next while, but we'll go forward. So on this youth, so again, we might have a, a, a youth in our, our family here that we're taking risks with. On top of that, we get the Two of Cups. Two of Cups, this here is um, this is about unconditional love. We have two men here. Uh, for some, it may be a same-sex relationship. Uh, but the, the story of this card is that one of these men was lonely, so they created another man uh, that was his opposite. And yet... Uh, like they were same in... So it, it'd be akin to like a soulmate, right? Created a soulmate... That was different, but the same, same, similar strengths, but different, uh, um, other energy. I should have just read it from the book, but anyway, um, now because of this, 
No, I don't take offense, people, because uh, this is uh, through history and lore that they make this up. <sighs> Basically, the going rate is that it's unconditional love that they're giving to each other. Why? Because they made opposite people fall in love with each other. Um, no matter, uh, how do I explain? You know what? I'm getting the bloody book because <laughs> it's like, I can't say it like the book says it. Give me a minute. <laughs> yeah, I'm not good with my words today. The two of cups. So anyway, there's a little story and the story is and Kindu and Galgamesh, whatever. <laughs> So Sumerian mythology, the Two of Cups is an ideal relationship that faces difficulties. Gilgamesh was a, uh, a bryant, tyrant, sorry. Oh my Lord, my glasses. <laughs> okay. Gilgamesh was a tyrant until Enkinda was created for him to be his equal in every way. And though their initial meeting was rocky, they became to love each other very much as opposites who complete each other. That was the phrase I was looking for. Opposites who complete each other. Okay. But rocky. Okay. So we may have a youth here, a child that is very much our opposite or has traits in this way. Uh, but they were, um, are they able to, we may be taking a risk with this child above and beyond. Are they able to love each other enough to look past their differences kind of thing? It's really what I get there. Man, I'm trying to spit that out. It just won't come. Okay, so there's something about a, a youth here uh, where you have great d differences uh, in character and whatnot. We're taking a risk here. Um, but the energy that's sitting here is unconditional love. Okay. Heaven and earth talking about the fledgling again, what we have in our mind, um, versus what is in reality. The fledgling is about bringing our passions and moving forward. We get the two of coins and that's about, yeah, balance, keeping a balance between work and life. Uh, I feel like the Aquarius at this point doesn't matter. Yeah, I don't care. I, I have a passion for my work. And if I want to work all day and all night and all week, then I'm going to do that. And nothing's going to get in my way. That kind of thing. This is what I'm getting. It's like we do not feel we need to put a balance in here. But they're going, we just need you to do that so that every other aspect of your life will come in uh, swimmingly. Like it'll just come in smoothly. But if we, you know, have a great imbalance there, then there'll be a great imbalance in the relationship and da da da. This is the thing. Or this could also be causing problems within uh, this youth as well. We may have a youth here that is having problems with us. Um, you know, we're not able to balance the child with our work. This may be as well. Okay. Now we're going to move forward again. This first row is kind of the, the, the energy's slow to move. Again, denial is the middle card that weighs most heavily here. And the ace wants to go forward. So it's almost like it's limiting. The denial is limiting, obviously. And the ten of swords is just not good. So on top of that, we get princess of swords, page of swords. So she speaks to curiosity, going forward in adventure to seek knowledge. And yet right before her is the ten of swords talking about backstabbing behavior. So it's really almost doesn't fit there. Next, on top of the two of cups, again, dealing with a youth here, um, then we need to deal with unconditional love here. We're taking a risk in dealing with this energy, um, but needing to keep in mind the two of cups. Again, it doesn't have to be love, uh, sexual love. It, it's, it can be love, um, compassionate love with a, a person, you know, in our field, a kid, uh, friend, uh, you know, whatever. So on top of the two of cups, we get the three of swords, which is about heartbreak. So yeah, and the sense that I'm getting here is that we may have had a youth, um, 
hurt us, right? Because the Three of Swords is piercing through that heart. And then the Two of Cups is about mending it in a direction. Now this is interesting. Just give me a minute. Yeah, it's almost like the two options here. We have heartbreak or we have love and compassion. And we, we're taking a risk here, jumping off in either one of these directions. We're either going to go or deal with this kid in, in heart and compassion, or we're going to break their heart or they're going to break our heart or whatever. And this is not going to go well. There's no midway here is the sense I'm getting. Now, on the heaven and earth... Again, the energy that wants to come forward with our passion and, you know, the universal. It seems like these divine cards are really the uh, divine energy coming in saying, you know, we need to balance. We need to take love and compassion and we need to uh, be careful of the Ten of Swords. Now, that's interesting because I was just going with the flow. Um, and they're saying, yes, be careful that we don't chop other pe people's fingers off or don't let anybody chop our fingers off that kind of thing now denial may have something to do with us chopping our own fingers off in a direction of worth and curiosity but nonetheless you know my cat she just whatever okay two of coins on top of there we get the five of wands and that's about struggle and strife here. It looks a lot more pristine. <laughs> uh, the five of wands are kind of all pulling up their wands and going, look at my wand, look at, look at. Uh, so it could be about rivalry, but uh, to a degree that we're not outwardly fighting. It's just glances here and there. That's what I'm getting. One looks like she wants to like beat the other over the head, but again, there's no... There's no action here. It's very still and very somewhat calm. But it's all in the eyes, right? Give me a minute here. Almost like we got dirty looks going on, but nobody's clubbing anybody over the head, which is a good thing. <laughs> but what is the point? Two of coins. Okay, we were talking about the universal energy of balancing life and work, life and play work and play um again the child in the mix here has an influence on our life balance really uh it may be throwing us off to a high degree we may be highly upset by what a child has either done to us said to us or the child uh, it yeah they're going both ways really um we've hurt the child the child has hurt us there's heartbreak there's a risk that's been taken in order to rectify the situation from the vantage point of the not the vantage point but the perspective of the Aquarius there's a risk that's been taken in this direction boom that's there now work-life balance five of wands I feel like we are really starting to come across our passion Again, there's a balance that needs to be struck within the work that we do in this way. But outside of us, we may uh, be finding that there's more uh, opposition uh, toward us. On a, And I'm getting a very low level, meaning, um, how do you say, like... <sighs> Instead of someone coming right in your face and I don't like what you do, I don't like you, I don't like the way you are, da, 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 it, it, you know, they'll just give you that look and, you know, and they won't say anything, but they'll talk to other people behind you, but this kind of thing. So it's known in their circles that they don't like you and da, da, da. Everything's known, but you don't know. They won't directly confront you. There may be people around you like this. They're dealing with you up front, but, uh, like, but behind your back, they're, they're stabbing you. So this is where that Ten of Swords comes in because there may be people in your midst. And I feel it's interesting because if you look at the Five of Wands, there's four of them circling this one central lady with long blonde hair. And the scenario is not one of them, they said, not one of them has touched her with any of that. 
but they're very menacing and, you know, kind of hovering and staring and giving dirty looks and glances and talking behind the back, all of that. But not one of them has approached her. So there's, there's something like this going on in your field here, unfortunately. So you may have some enemies here that are just passive enemies. They're people that have a lot of fuel, but they just don't have a lot of guts to come forth and tell you to your face. And if I know Aquarius, they're going to go, well, they can't tell me to my face. It's not valid. <laughs> you know, usually, and usually that's the case. So then they just disregard. But still, it's an energy you can feel in the air is what I'm getting. This may influence you somewhat if this is at work. <sighs> yeah. But that Ten of Swords hits highly. Um, there's a curiosity for direction that we want to go but a denial, something about denial here. You know what, I'm going to read in the reading mode. I'm going to read from the book here and just see if they give any other tips that I'm just blanking out energetically. It's not coming from that card. So we'll read from the book and see what happens here. <clears throat> Okay, so denial. It says not everything is in reach. Sometimes I must create distance between what I want and when or how I'm meant to receive it. Consider the weight for your highest good. You're not meant to achieve what you want right now. Keep the faith, for if you wait and show patience, it will reveal some wondrous things later. This is a gentle warning not to get caught up in your desire to reach your goal too soon. You may choose sour fruit that only looks ripe and juicy. Only looks ripe and juicy. In this case, I alone know when the time is right. Patience, my child. So that's really what it is here. Is there something... Okay, so that did clarify. Because I think denial is kind of the wrong vibration for that. Patience would be more... I have to imprint that. Because <laughs> denial is more of a resistance. And patience is more of a... I don't know. Anyway, okay, thinking out loud. Denial. <clears throat> so yeah, having the patience to wait for the fruit to ripen rather than go forward and pick it. Because if we pick it now, our fruit is going to be sour. It's not going to taste right. That's not what we want. We want it to be nice uh, and whatever. And then having the Ten of Swords on top of that is kind of like stabbing ourselves in the back. You know, if we pick things too soon or we go after things too soon, it's it's not going to serve us. And the curiosity is sitting here. I feel like there's a curiosity. It's almost like we could cut off our hand despite our foot or whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> what the saying is, it's like if we push things too far, we can blow it all to smithereens. But if we wait, we can get more than we even are after. This kind of energy. Okay, that did clear it up. And again, we have a youth in our midst here. We have taken, there's a risk that's been taken in this relationship with the child. Um, there's heartbreak that's gone back and forth. And this is really the midst of everything. I feel like um, has a bearing on everything. Okay, and then the heaven and earth the fledgling is about growing passions, work, life balance, life play balance, whatever. Five of Wands, you may have people around you who's not so excited about you making your way in the world in the way that you are. And this is being highlighted. So you're going to have a press, uh, how you say, oppressors? People that are, yeah. But uh, the sense here they're giving me at this month is none of them got the guts to face you anyway, so don't worry about it if you can disregard that. Or, uh, you know, face them head on and deal with it uh, once and for all. And Aquarius ain't far from either one of those directions. Because they can get right in your face and go, look, what's your problem? And then, you know, maybe that those dirty looks will dissipate after that. Sometimes you have to deal with things head on and, and make it known that, you know, I can feel you looking at me. I can feel you you know, giving me dirty looks, like, stop it, grow up, you know, or whatever, and move on, like, don't you have better things? <laughs> kind of like this, right? So, we may be frustrated by that. I feel that's more to the end of the month, though, 
the what we're dealing with now is the heartbreak that we may have for our youth in our midst and also a curiosity about going forward the zodiac card that we have for Aquarius is moon in cancer 16 belonging a sensitive introspective phase so this may be what we're in moon is about emotional center um, we may be trying to figure out where we belong at this time or you know it, it may have to do with um, a child as well feeling a sense of belonging or not right at this time do we feel we belong um, yeah where do we belong in work where do we belong in our life and in our family it's all these areas we're just trying to fit ourselves into is the sense that I'm getting so we're really going in to access our emotions and figure that out. Six and one is seven. Again, congratulations. Moon, again, emotions. Cancer, going in to figure it out. So it's all about belonging this month. Now, the TLC for your soul. <sighs> Destiny delivers is the card that you get. What does it say? It says, what you see is only part of the story that is unfolding for you. You've been visualizing, praying, and taking action. And yet everything remains the same. <laughs> can, I can relate to this. The more you push forward, trying to make things happen faster, the greater your inner resistance. Release your control, and as you let go, you will open yourself to receive generous bounty. All the small acts of kindness you've offered to those in need have created a channel of good experiences to flow to you. Wonderful surprises, unexpected manifestations, and blessings will be on their way to you now. You're being acknowledged for acting as an angel to others. Wow, isn't that wonderful? So destiny is delivering, and I think what the problem is here is <laughs> we may be pushing that energy in order to, hmm, yeah, there's a sense of um, control, resistance, right, through that control. Give me a minute here. Because I totally relate to the praying, taking action, yet not everything. We, we've done, 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 done. <laughs> and you go to the end of the line and you take a breath and you go, wait a minute. You know, uh, not that we expect that. Because we don't. For the longest time, we don't. But there's something there about, like, how come, you know, again, seeing from our perspective, right? So there's something about control and open, opening to receive uh, that is blocking all of this. But they are saying you're being acknowledged for acting as an angel to others. So thank you for that. And uh, destiny will deliver. I do not feel... <laughs> I don't feel it's going to be the main part of the month. I feel this will start to open up near the end of the month if we are in the right field. Meaning, uh, if we release and open to receive. I mean, I don't know. I could go out in the back 40 and open my arms wide open. I'm still not going to get anything. So I don't know. <laughs> I quit saying that. I don't know how it's going to come through, but there's a lot of water here. And the sense, too, whenever I get running water or still water, is like the running water is moving into the still in this picture, symbolizing there is a little bit of emotional processing here that we really have to do some turbulence to get to the still calm piece. And I feel like that has a part in it as well. And, I mean, the Three of Swords being there is, is heartbreak. So that's part of the processing of those emotions so wonderful prize uh wonderful surprises and manifestations so that is aquarius for march yeah very weird energy in the beginning here but actually once i got the actual definition it was like it was hidden behind the energy of that word denial uh but here it's more like patience to wait for things to ripen they're not ripe yet. And that's really the essence of what, you know, it's interesting. These TLC cards seem to wrap up the whole reading in one card because um, they really describe what's, you know, the, the Aquarius going through is, is um, again, not expecting 
to be paid off. They're doing this because it does fulfill them. And Aquarius is very much of the energy of humanitarian. Um, we also are very, uh, sorry, Aquarius is also very futuristic thinkers. So not a lot of people can uh, relate to the way that their mind works. Uh, but they do move forward in the way that um, the energies truly want them to go. But when they have time to take note or take pace of what's going on, they go, wait a minute. <laughs> you know, and it's like, how come this person gets all of this for doing one, two, three? And I do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and I get nothing. <laughs> you know, it's not like, but it's just the noticing of it. And that's what I'm getting is that we're not getting a lot of, uh, and, and then they're saying that there's a block there. So the block is, is a control block and it's also a block of, uh, emotional. We may be, uh, emotionally stuffing. And if that's the case, that would be a block as well. So hopefully that helps you move forward into that receiving energy that you're meant to have because it's going to be a bang up <laughs> in the best possible way for the Aquarius, I think, because they've really, um, Unfortunately, blocking the receiving for quite a while is the sense I'm getting, like years. And uh, it's payback time, and they really have a roster. It's like they got a, um, a deficit that the universe wants to pay off here, um, but they just got to get unblocked from the field that they're in, process the emotions, and release control so that we can accept things. Because they're in giving mode, and I think when they're in accepting mode, they may not be in the right frequency. I think that they get um, down on themselves or down on the world or down on energy. And that's when they're ready to receive. And when they get up on energy, they're pushing energy outward. So they're not in reception. So this is what I'm getting uh, frequency wise. So hopefully, again, it helps you in some kind of way, shape or form. Take care, guys. That's March 2021. Take care, have fun, and be kind.